Let's see. Are you a boy or a girl? Looks like they've finished the gene projection. Let's see what you'll look like when you're all grown up. You're going to look a lot like your dad. It's a big world out there, son. Full of all sorts of people. What about you? What kind of person are you going to be? Tell me about the children. Children's minds are more easily accepting of indoctrination. Their bodies more adaptable to augmentation. The result was the ultimate soldier. When my Spartans were all that stood between humanity and extinction, nobody was concerned about why they were originally built. So you feel in the end your choices were justified? My work saved the human race. Do you think the Spartans' lack of basic humanity helped? Spartans never die. Your mistake is seeing Spartans as military hardware. My Spartans are humanity's next step. Our destiny as a species. Transhumanism. What is it? What is it about? It is about making ourselves better. Helping us to live longer, to think faster, to run farther, or even to live forever. Through genetic manipulation and technological and mechanical augmentation of our bodies, all these things could be possible. What's not to like about this? Sounds like it'd be great for everyone. The ability to live longer, to have stronger limbs, to manipulate your genes, to live longer lives and have more longevity. What's the problem with any of this? Why should we be against this? I myself as a Christian am opposing this based on a few key scriptures as well as more than just that but the, the few that I chose to pull out for this video. I'm going to start in Genesis chapter 1 verse 27. Then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. The problem I have with transhumanism is, to me, it seems, especially the genetic manipulation part, where you're going in, trying to change. First, it starts with what color hair you're going to have, or perhaps your child, as you saw in a clip before. They're alluding to that in the Halo clip and such, and even in the in the Fallout clip before that, that you could go in, pick the uh, predetermine the height, the hair color, the eye color, everything like that, the skin color, whatever. You could change that or even go even farther and give the child or a person, whichever stage they are in life or age, the ability to have increased stamina and everything or even give them animal traits to go far off the deep end on that one. Give them the ability to have like ESP, or not ESP, uh, yeah, extrasensory perception or whatever, just like a, a shark may have. Or maybe to be able to see in the dark. See, the problem I have with that is Genesis 1, verse 26, clearly states we were created in God's image. That's the Trinity talking there, saying, let us make man in our image. The problem is, if we go in and we start to mess with our DNA, I, for one, believe, based on that scripture, that we are changing the image in which we're made. No longer are we made in God's image, but we're trying to, or we have recreated ourselves in the image that we like, that suits our fancy, that we so desire. Uh, I'm going to move on to the next scripture. This one just a little bit farther down the line. Genesis 3 and verse 4, we have the serpent, Satan, in the garden talking to Eve about eating the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Starting in verse 4, it says, Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate, 
She also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. There's a very powerful verse right there, if you ask me, describing the, the very inception of the fall of mankind to sin nature, and here's a whole host of, of messy stuff coming up there, but you see that in uh, verse 5, Satan tells her that she will be like God. That's funny. I just read in verse uh, in Genesis 1 and 26 that we were created in God's image. Truly, that makes us like him already. So Satan's trying to promise us something we already have, which is very convenient. And that directly parallels what we're hearing now. A lot of the people, the proponents behind this transhumanism movement, especially some prominent ones from Google, or at least affiliated with Google in some matters, have stated that their goal in life is to cure death. That's interesting that, that that's his goal now, and that's exactly, well, if you're to be like God, like Satan's telling Eve in the garden, that God's eternal, he lives forever. So that's just another aspect, I believe, that the idea that we can cure death for humanity just through technology and other things, or maybe uploading our minds to a computer to live forever even after we die is of demonic influence and straight from the pit of hell. It's a lie. Our true redemption and eternal life lies solely in Jesus Christ and that is the only way to attain that. Moving on a little bit farther in Genesis, we come across Genesis 11 verse 6. This is where the Lord is describing and talking about the Tower of Babel and the people who are building it. It's a very poignant scripture if you ask me. And it reads, Indeed the people are one and they all have one language. And this is what they began to do. Now nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. That right there is interesting to me because if we put it into context of this situation, it seems to me that a lot of the stuff that these transhumanists are going to try and accomplish They'll be able to succeed as long as they are in unison. There's power in that even. Not nearly as powerful as, say, God. But they will be able to achieve something. So perhaps one day they will claim or even have an answer to death themselves. Which leads me to the next scripture, which I don't wholeheartedly say that it's connected in any way. But it is an interesting read. I encourage you guys to look into it yourselves. It's uh, all the way at the end of the Bible in Revelation 9, verse 6. In those days, men will seek death and will not find it. They will desire to die and death will flee from them. Now, this is just pure speculation on this one, but I believe that could be speaking to the fact that perhaps they've augmented themselves and genetically manipulated everything so much that they can no longer die. They have achieved their goal. But things are looking so bad on the earth and they're tormented so much here in the scripture that but they have a no way out. They can't die. They're desiring to die, but they cannot. See, a lot of humanity these days has a, a problem with death. Death, the fear of death, grips so many lives on this planet. Can you imagine a time where that will be what you long for? Or not necessarily you, the viewer but that someone would desire for death, but they can't find it. That is such a foreign thought. Now, don't get me wrong. This video isn't to dog on or hate on the idea of implants or pacemakers or anything. I'm talking about things that we could do to augment our bodies mechanically, genetically, especially genetically. That's, that's my biggest issue here. To change our DNA to where it's no longer the DNA that Christ gave us at creation, but instead it's a DNA made in our own image that we could desire or say that we could do a better job than God. So I, th I find the biggest problem is if we change our DNA, that is probably, or it could have something similar to do with the mark of the beast found in Revelation, where once you receive the mark, you can't be redeemed. That's it. It's like a ticket straight to hell. It's over for you. Saddest thing I could ever imagine. But it's going to happen. So I'm thinking that there's got to be some sort of genetic manipulation involved there. 
So any time that you guys see in the news that these guys, that they want to cure death, they want to live forever, they want to upload their minds into a computer. We got a, a movie coming out with Johnny Depp sometime soon where that very thing happens. And I believe things go wrong, which is very foretelling or foreshadowing of events that may happen in the coming decades. I, I don't have any timeline that I think that they're supposed to adhere to on this. I don't believe also that people are in cahoots with demons or Satan or anything. I believe that a lot, if not the vast majority, 95%, something like that, believe that they are doing this all as a benefit to humanity. Not going to throw out any any ideas of greed and only the rich will be able to get this and everything. Just let's take it at the face value of this is beneficial, it's meant to help people, this is great. As uh, the Halo clip had, Dr. Holsey, they believe that they are helping humanity to take its next step in evolution, which I as a Christian, obviously, I hope obviously, at least if you say you're a Christian, you should take the Bible for what it says. He means, God means what he says and says what he means. He doesn't lie. He's always the same. So when the word says something, I believe it. So if the word says that he created the heavens and the earth in six days, I'll believe that. Sure, there may be, or there may be different scientific interpretations, but I'm not going to try and shoehorn that into my beliefs. I need the Bible, and that is it. That's what I believe. Also, I want to reiterate, going back to the Genesis 3, verse 4 through 6, when he, Eve was shown the, the fruit, not really an apple or anything, we don't know what was really there, there's some speculation, but when Eve was shown the fruit and she showed it to Adam as well, that it looked good to them. See, transhumanism, all these ideas, living forever, stopping disease, changing our DNA, live longer, be stronger, everything. It sounds terrific, it sounds like good stuff, but when something is made to deceive, that's exactly the thought and the, and the ideas that go behind it. It's made to deceive you, and to, to trick you into something, to lure you into a trap, a genetic trap in this case. Of course it's going to look good, of course it's going to be desirable. You think people sin because things look bad for them, that they know the outcome? No, it looks good in the moment. So, there's some food for thought, guys. Let me know what you think of this whole transhumanism idea. Let me know if you've seen examples of it, or if you have been concerned about it in the past, or if you think, perhaps, that, sure, this might be a problem, or it could be a problem in the future, but why are you talking about it? We should just be concerned with spreading the gospel only. I know my myself, I like to go after topics that others perhaps wouldn't cover or wouldn't try and talk about. So I, I like uh, getting into some of the mysteries of life, if you will. And I believe that the Bible has answers for each and every one of these mysteries that I can come across. And this is just uh, one of them, guys. So thanks for watching. It took me a little bit of time to capture all the stuff to put this video together. But that's not what it's all about. It's just about getting the topic out there. So uh, leave a uh, like if you liked it. Dislike it if you disliked it. Let me know either way what you thought in the comments below. And again, thank you for watching this video. I'll see you guys later. Rocket Man out.